family held a funeral for our grandparents without telling me and now they all think I'm lying about not being there. I'm 30s F and caused a major blow up in my family and now none of them are talking to me. For background, my hometown is tiny, 500 pop, and when I went 2 hours away to the city, 15 comma 000 pop, for college, I loved it. I ended up staying after graduation, got married, and I'm happy here for a decade. I visit my hometown every few weeks or so, call slash text my family near daily, and thought we were all good. My family's pretty small. Just my brother, mom, stepdad, dad, stepmom, and an aunt and uncle, mom's siblings, never married, no kids. My mother's grandparents moved to my hometown when I was in high school and were just down the street from us. My family has always been pretty drama-free, aside from my parents' divorce when I was a kid, and we've been happy. The step-parents were blended in perfectly and we share holidays and celebrations together. We're all super close and just the perfect little group. Ever since I moved away, the topic of when am I moving back? Is constant, and I've always laughed it off. My hometown has nothing. You have to drive 30 minutes for milk and bread. 60 to 90 minute one-way commutes to work. And floods shut down the main road every Easter. I love the town, but I love here more. I have parks, stores, community events, a library. The city is great. My family grumbles that I need to move back, but I refuse. I've been trying to encourage them to come here, especially since it's not an hour drive to the nearest medical facility. Now to the meat and potatoes, both my grandparents passed over COVID times. They were both old and their health had been failing for a while so it was only a matter of time. Thankfully they didn't catch it, but it made visiting them impossible and we survived mostly through FaceTime. They both passed in their sleep months apart. Both were cremated and kept securely under the kitchen sink for safe key. Ping, while the pandemic blew over. That was 2021. Well, I just found out my family held a funeral for them and scattered the ashes in my uncle's maple grove over the summer. No one said a word to me about it. I've visited numerous times before and after and not one word. I only found out because my great uncle from California posted on Facebook a few weeks ago that he is entering hospice and was so thankful his health stayed strong enough for him to see his little sister, my grandma, to her final resting place. I was confused and called my mom. She was all yeah, the funeral we had in July, remember? Y'all, I visited them for the 4th of July. They did the funeral the 8th. Not a word about it to me. They had planned this for months. Long enough to arrange for my infirm great uncle to be brought over from the other side of the country. Apparently, they talked about it all the time. Everyone is convinced I was at the funeral. They swear I was there. I can prove I wasn't because Google's got my location history. My hubby is baffled because he was supposedly there, too, but he had to work every weekend in June and July. Time clock doesn't lie. My family straight up forgot about me. I'm hurt. I'm sad. And they're pissed at me for lying. They think I'm causing drama over nothing. Nothing I say can convince them I wasn't there. My family is united in this. And they've all put me on read until I admit I'm wrong. They think I've gone nuts. Either there's a doppelganger of me attending events, or my family doesn't want to admit they screwed up. I'm not backing down. Thanksgiving is coming up, and my family's been vague posting on Facebook about forgetful kids and mental health. It's so freaking weird and I don't know if I'm in bizarro world or what's going on. My mom's best friend reached out and said I should just admit I was wrong and apologize, that I'm causing my mom so much unnecessary stress. I asked her if she's checked everyone's home for CO2. She hung up on, me. We checked our CO2, and our testers are running just fine, I have reached out to a few people in my hometown to check in on my folks, and they all say they're fine. I even spoke with a local volunteer firefighter group to see if they could check for gas leaks. Not sure if they were able to. I don't know what to do. I've shown them the proof I wasn't there, but they know I'm tech savvy and just assume I've photoshopped it. Hubby says we need a break, and we're going to be staying home this holiday season. Update 1 it's 1127 and Thanksgiving just happened. Hubby and I stayed home. We got a small turkey and made our own little Thanksgiving. It was nice. We ate around noon, then watched a movie, and later sat outside with a bottle of wine to watch the sun set behind the trees and neighbor houses. We usually take the day before off, drive to my folks, stay the night, and help with the Thanksgiving Day cooking. So it wasn't until Wednesday night that my mom broke the silence. Mom called and asked when I was showing up, and I told her we were staying home this year, but for them to have a happy Thanksgiving, and to give the rest of the family my love. She was quiet for a long time after I said that, and I think she eventually mumbled an okay, or something, and hung up. It wasn't an angry hang up. Just a hang up. On Thanksgiving Day, I sent a group happy Thanksgiving. Gift to our family group chat. I received a few happy Thanksgivings back. No one said anything else. There's been no posts on Facebook. Update to my dad and I usually talk on the phone every Sunday morning. We're both early risers so we'd chat over our morning coffees and watch the sunrise. Him and I haven't really spoken since this all went down and it's been tough. I'm used to talking to him, you know? Well, I was sitting outside in my usual spot, watching the sun rise and freezing my butt off, and he called me. I'm not entirely sure how to describe the emotions I felt. It was a mix of, panic, hope, terror, happiness, and dread. I ended up answering because I just had to know what he wanted. It was an awkward conversation. 
He didn't address the current drama, but instead tiptoed around the situation with all the grace of an cow on stilts. For instance, a simple how are you doing? type question was answered with a not good. And the whole conversation would stall out for a bit because he knew why I wasn't doing well. So we ended up talking about the weather, the various winter birds we'd seen in our feeders, and the Christmas decorations around town. Things like that. Eventually he asked if we were coming out for Christmas, and sounded sad when I told him we weren't. He asked if him and stepmom could come visit us instead, and I told him it wasn't a good idea this year. That hubby and I were going to spend a quiet holiday together. I let him know he should be receiving some gifts at his P.O. box any day now, so to please pick them up from the post office and put them under the family tree for everyone. He said he'd ship ours to us as well. And that was pretty much it. No crazy drama to report. The only posts on Facebook have been the usual Christmas excitement ones, countdowns, photos of Santa, silly gift ideas, photos of company Christmas parties. On a personal note, hubby and I are doing all right. Our health is good, our spirits high, and we're as solid as ever. We each got Christmas bonus at our jobs, so we're excited about that. They're not large, but we're happy to have them. We have also done advent calendars for the first time ever. I got him a Lego one, and he got me a hot chocolate one. We're going to do the calendars again next year. Maybe make a tradition out of it. Money does weird things to people, you know? No one in my family is wealthy by any means. After my grandparents passed, their small estate was used to pay for their end-of-life expenses and remaining assets split up. Everyone directly related got an equal split, so excluding, ooted my dad and the step-parents. I don't remember the exact amount I received, but it was around $5,000 if I recall. My brother gave me a share, too, so I could finish paying off my college debt while the interest freeze was active. The great-uncle from California has kids and grandkids, and great-grandkids of his own, and also isn't wealthy. I think one of his kids makes good money doing something in finance, but I'm not entirely sure. I can't imagine he left us anything, as we hardly knew him. My mom, aunt, and uncle only met him a few times in their lives, and my brother and I even less. Grandma and him were close, but I don't think he liked my grandpa much. Yesterday was Sunday, but I didn't answer my dad when he called. I just really didn't feel up to a pointless chat, so let it go to voicemail. He tried to reach me a few times throughout the day, but I didn't answer. Our bestie last minute invited us over to his house for Christmas Day lunch, today, so husband and I were busy all Christmas Eve making cookies, peanut brittle, and homemade suckers slash hard candies for his kids. Mom tried to reach out as well, but I also ignored her calls. We had a blast at lunch. Our friend's kids are a lot of fun to be around. They got some techie presents from their grandparents, Quest VR headset and Steam decks, lucky little rascals, friend and his wife aren't good with tech, while hubby and I are, so we helped get them set up while our friend played a good host to his folks and in-laws. The grandparents didn't realize that a Steam deck required a Steam account, so we got the kids all their own accounts set up, added them to our Steam friends lists, and gifted them some games. We also bought them a few VR games for their headset, and they were off to the races with Beat Saber in no time. As for my folks, my brother texted and asked if we could talk sometime tomorrow. I think me ignoring mom and dad has caused some kind of upset. Which they deserve. Spoke with my brother over th. E phone this morning. For starters, he apologized for everything. Him and I are good, for now. For a bit of background, my brother and I are only two years apart. There weren't a lot of kids around growing up, so the two of us were often stuck doing stuff together. So we have a lot of shared interests and passions. He's been pretty silent on this whole matter, but still part of the group, if you know what I mean. I think the thought of losing him out of my life was probably the most painful, because he's always been there. He was my rock until I met my husband. He's definitely a mama's boy, though, so anything mom wanted, he made sure she got. I'm happy to have him back. Without further ado, here's the story from the horse's mouth. Mom apparently had a cancer scare late last year, which no one told me about, go figure, and dad had a stint put in his heart back in January, which I did know about. This sense of mortality has apparently lit a fire under mom's ass to get me back home but since I wasn't reacting to her passive-aggressive hinting, she and stepmom decided to go full crazy. My great-uncle's health was bad, and he'd been asking about funeral arrangements for his sister, my grandma, for a while, so the moms decided to plan it. And use the event as a giant middle finger to me. They kept all the planning pretty hush-hush between the two of them, so no one on our side of the family actually knew about the funeral until like two weeks before. The mom said they'd invited hubby and I. No one thought anything about it. No one thought to mention, confirm, or check with me. The plan was to scatter the ashes, say a few words, and maybe head to town for lunch. It was a small affair. The moms didn't even tell the family that our great uncle was coming for it. Like I said, it was a small thing. Barely a footnote. No one thought it was odd because we're pretty chill people. Fourth of July happens. Hubby and I are out. No one thought to mention it, as we were all busy, celebrating and having a great time. Anytime the topic of this weekend would start, the conversation would be quickly shifted by one of the moms. We went back home. Eighth of July happens. Great uncle rolls into town with a few of his kids, grandkids, and great grandkids, and it's a surprise to everyone, but the moms. Everyone drives to the Maple Grove and the moms have brought a ton of food and stuff. It's a full-blown party. 
No one on my side noticed I wasn't there, because there were so many extra faces outside the usual group. They did the spreading of the ashes, they said their words, they ate, they had a great time. It wasn't until our great uncle left, and all his side left with him, that they realized I wasn't there. And hadn't been there. And this is where the crazy went up a notch. My brother says the moms were happy no one noticed I wasn't there. And that this was proof to everyone that I needed to move back because I was so easily forgotten about. Because none of them thought to reach out, right? They basically did a ton of guilt tripping manipulation bullshit and it made everyone upset at me for not showing up. Somehow it was my fault for being excluded. So suddenly everyone was on their side with sticking it to me. But then a few months went by, and tempers cooled, and then I guess the horror of it set in. Followed by the shame, but by then they were in too deep. How do you undo something like this? And since I hadn't brought it up, I guess they figured they would all just stay quiet about it and hope I never asked about a funeral. That's when I discovered the situation from my great uncle's Facebook and called my mom, who panicked and went with the stupidest solution. Claiming I was there. Don't I remember? I ended up talking with a few friends from high school, mentioning the situation, and word got back to those in town. So suddenly town gossip and little old church ladies got involved. Was I, or wasn't I at the funeral? Did my family forget T, invite me to the funeral of the only grandparents I'd ever know? Or am I just causing a ruckus? My brother said they all just went with mom's answer. Of course they wouldn't forget me. Of course I was there. Of course they're good people. And it just snowballed. The family expected me to eventually fold. I'm usually a non-confrontational person, so me sticking to my guns was unexpected. And then I missed Thanksgiving. And now Christmas. With no sign of backing down. And I guess the realization that I could just stop being part of their lives is setting in and my parents are panicking. He's tried just getting them to apologize and explain, but stubbornness prevails. They want a rug sweep, but I'm not letting them. My brother is upset with everything that's happened. He's realized just how crappy it all has been and he wants nothing to do with it anymore. But since he lives with my mom, he can't get away from it. He has asked if he can come stay with us for a little bit. I spoke with hubby, and he's in agreement with me that my brother can come crash in our spare bedroom for as long as he wants. Brother works remotely, so it's no trouble for him to pick up and go. I believe he's making the trip today or tomorrow. Not entirely sure, but I expect crap to hit the fan when he arrives. On a side note, hubby's stoked that my brother and I made up. The two usually game together, but haven't due to the situation. He's downstairs right now setting up his man cave in preparation for my brother's arrival. I'm happy to see him so excited. My brother rolled in late last night. He'd obviously been crying and when I opened the door, he just held me and sobbed. I'd never seen him like that before and soon both of us were just standing in the doorway crying into one another. He kept apologizing. Over and over again. Said he wasn't sure why he went with it. Just kept saying sorry. Hubby got him all set up in the spare bedroom while brother and I talked. My brother's a wreck. He, s always been a big guy, but he's lost a lot of weight and his clothes just hang off him. If I didn't know better, I'd think he was on drugs. We talked for a little bit before bed and he re-explained everything for my husband. I'd told hubby the story, but it was just so weird that hearing it again helped. This morning my brother was up at dawn making some coffee and getting his work day going. Hubby's off all week, lucky, so hubby made us working folks some pancakes and bacon. So far everything's peaceful. We've decided not to answer any calls from our family. They've been made aware that he arrived safely, and that we are going to spend the New Year's together, and that we're not answering any calls until January 1st. They may text if they wish. I'm sure they're losing their minds. Serves them right. Everyone, have a safe and happy New Year's. Don't drink and drive. Things here have been quiet. My brother's settled in nicely and he's a great housemate. Our place isn't very big, but we have full basement and a nice outside patio slash porch area so it doesn't feel crowded at all with the extra addition. He's a quiet and clean guy. No hassle at all. He got some fresh clothes from the Walmart, a haircut, and trimmed his beard, so he's more presentable now. He's a lady killer when he gets cleaned up. He's made nice with a, very nosy, but kind, retired couple next door and is adapting to city living nicely. Folks back home have been mostly well behaved. There's been a few texts back and forth, as we're not answering calls. Mom mainly wants to know when brother's coming back, but he's keen on staying here for a while. Mom said I can't keep him and I told her he's a grown-ass man and can do what he wants. Brother says he has her blocked after she ordered him to return home. Brother has tentatively asked if he could stay long term, should he decide to, or at least longer than a usual visitor would stay. Which we're fine with. He has a good paying job and could afford an apartment, but he's never lived on his own and I would guess he has some anxiety about it. Should that be the case, he'll start paying us some rent and we'd probably adjust to give him the basement as his own space. My brother is officially staying with us for the long haul. Hubby and him spent all Sunday organizing the basement and shifting things around so he now has his own area to be comfortable in. He's pretty handy and has also started fixing little things around our house. Our windows and doors have never closed and locked slash unlocked smoother. He even fixed one of the closets we never use because we can never get the darn door open. Sadly, he also had to change the locks on our house and get us all new keys. This is because while hubby and I were out this Saturday, the moms showed up. They'd been calling and texting us all week, but we weren't really answering them, 
So I guess the two decided to drive over and hash it out in person. They have emergency keys to my place, and just let themselves in. Brother told them to leave, they argued, and my nosy, but kind, neighbors called the police when they noticed the commotion. So, we get a call from neighbor's wife, return home to some cops in our yard, all the neighbors out vacuuming their trees, and my nosy, but kind, neighbors standing on my porch with my brother behind them, doing their best Gandalf you shall not pass impression. Had to talk with the cops, explain that we were having a family dispute and word vomited. I don't really remember what all I said, and was shaking a lot. Our local cops are really great. Fantastic guys and gals in blue, and took it all in stride. It's really cold here, so one had me join him in his cruiser with the heat on, and gave me a bottle of water to calm down while we talked. They asked if we wanted the moms trespassed but I wasn't sure if that counted as a criminal charge so just asked the cops if they could just make them leave, which the cops did with no fuss. I think the, moms were shocked we were taking this so seriously. They didn't fight or scream at us. Just left quietly. My dad promised me he'd make sure his wife left us alone. Or else. He said he'd also have a stern talk with my mom. Him and I talked Sunday morning, and he seemed absolutely at the end of his rope. Husband jokingly told my dad he could move in, too. To which he declined. Not sure where to go from here, but we're getting some ring cameras installed once they arrive. And everyone but my dad is blocked. Hopefully they all just leave us alone. Dad got a new bird slash squirrel feeder from Amazon, looks like a little picnic table for a child's dolly but has a mesh top for the bird seed. I think it's supposed to be for chickens? It's totes adorbs. To his horror, it also works as a Cooper Hawk feeder, so now he's fortifying his defenses and putting up some trellises around it. He'll have to wait till warmer weather before planting anything to grow on them. We had some ring cameras installed and put in a motion-activated camera that double functions as a light bulb. It goes in the light fixture outside the front door and is pretty cool. Video quality isn't all that great, but it's a nice addition I guess. It does overlook the bird feeders, so I've been watching it on my lunch breaks on the days I have to go into the office. Hubby and brother are feuding. They started a coop farm in Stardew Valley a few days ago and they both want to romance Leah. My husband confided in me that he's also been romancing Sebastian as a backup. I'm not sure why he's keeping this a secret, but he's pretty smug about it. Update 3 My dad came out for a visit over the weekend. We had a good time and the weather was lovely for some grilling and beers. It was really nice to see him again and he seemed healthy and in good spirits. Here's his report from back home. Stepmom, dad's wife, has started to realize she's screwed up. I credit her change of mindset to the fact that my dad sat her down a and d laid it out for her, she leaves his kids alone, or she's getting divorce papers. That apparently shut her up right quick, because they had a prenup done when they married and I'm not sure the details of it, but it wouldn't end favorably for her. She hasn't worked in years, so I imagine she'd be eligible for alimony? But I'm not versed in any of that legal mumbo-jumbo. Dad didn't seem too worried about it, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Stepdad was pissed the police were involved in the last mom visit, despite no one getting arrested or anything, and was in a the kids are out of control and need to be reined back in mindset. When my dad pointed out that the kids in question were all in their mid-thirties, it took some of the steam out of stepdad's sales. According to my dad, even my mom looked a little surprised when he said that. So, part of me is wondering if a good chunk of this whole thing is my mom not truly realizing that her kids were grown, and no longer children she could make demands of. Both of the moms have left us alone. I expected my mom to continue to kick up a fuss, but I think the cops spooked her. There was a wonderful suggestion by a comment or to get their pastor involved, which I passed along to my dad. Dad has since spoken to their pastor about everything. He's a young guy, relatively new to their church, and joked that his first month on the job he had to do three funerals in a row and his new flock were just dying to get away from him, so he's got a sense of humor which is nice. The new pastor agreed to sit down with everyone and help the family hash it all out in a true come to Jesus type moment next month, so that maybe we could celebrate Easter together as our first holiday as a family. Dad said the pastor was aware our family was having some troubles, but unsure of exactly what was going on, and since he was new, the pastor didn't want to pry. He has also agreed to do a small service down at my uncle's Maple Grove later in the sum. Mare, as it usually floods and is a muddy mess all spring. According to my dad, my aunt and uncle are so over all the drama and just ready to move on, so I expect hugs and apologies from them when we next meet. Update 4 Happy April Fools everyone. I hope you all check your caramel apples for stray onions before taking a bite. I also hope your Easter weekend was a delightful one. It is with great joy that I tell you all about our most recent update. Possibly even a conclusion to this whole ordeal. The entire family, aunt, uncle, moms, dads, brother, me, husband, and pastor met at my dad's house and we all sat down to hash the situation out. As expected from what my dad said, my aunt and uncle greeted us all with apologies and hugs, which was nice. My uncle usually helps host the Easter egg hunts with the church and he brought our Easter baskets to give to us in case us kids weren't sticking around them for the weekend. I'm not sure why but seeing it made me tear up and feel stupid, because it was just a basket of candy but it meant a lot to me for some reason. The pastor led us in a prayer and talked about forgiveness and such. He then asked us all to talk one at a time about how we're feeling and what we want the end result of today to be. No one was allowed to interrupt so everyone got to talk. It was nice. 
The consensus for the group was that most everyone wanted things to go back to normal. The only ones who had any variance off this was my mom and stepdad. They both wanted all us kids to move back to the area. The pastor asked them why they wanted us back, and neither could give a good reason other than because family, and the pastor asked us if we were thriving where we were. And we said we were. He asked if we were happy there. Which we were. He then asked my mom and stepdad if they wanted us to give up our happiness to make them happy. And mom broke down and said no. We all had a good cry. The pastor then asked about the funeral and lies that led up t it and followed it and how it made us all feel and what we wished we'd done differently if we had the chance. It was all very emotional, but in a good way, you know? Everyone apologized and admitted they f up and did a really crappy thing. We all talked for a long, long time and the pastor was a great mediator. Eventually we all reached some sort of resolution and I think we're good now. Emotions are still high and a little raw in areas, but we stayed for Easter weekend and had a nice time. We're going to keep moving forward slowly and try to repair the relationship, but I believe we're well and truly out of the woods. As for my brother, he's still staying with us, and mom will stop trying to guilt trip him back home. He's thinking about renting a small apartment in our area but we're not pushing him to make a decision. He knows he's welcome to stay as long as he wants. I think he wants to try dating, he's had a few girlfriends but never anything serious, and is embarrassed to bring any girls around our place, lol. He's been going to a few random classes slash book clubs at the local library for something free to do and hitting it off with all the little old ladies who attend, and they keep trying to hook him up with girls his age who they know. He has been on a few lunches slash coffee dates with a couple girls, but I think he's too embarrassed by the attention to give it a real try at dating any of them. He's happy, though, which is all I could ask for. I'm not sure if there will be any more updates, as I think it's all be resolved about as much as it can be at the moment. I wanted to thank you all for your words of advice and giving me a place to vent and scream into the void.